Infinite scroll is a technique used to increase engagement by allowing users to load new content just by scrolling down the page. In this video, we'll try to implement this technique in a Twitter-like app built with Inertia.js and Laravel. For now, we only have a Twitter model with a user relationship and some seeded records in the database. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new endpoint to get the user profile. So we'll go to web and add a new route, get and we are using route model binding to resolve the user by its ID. But since we want to emulate Twitter better, we can specify a custom key like this. So username is a unique column I have in the user's table. So this will find the user by its username rather than its ID. And let's add a fictitious user tweets controller. through the index method. And of course, this controller doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. And if we go to HTTP, we'll have our controller. Let's add our index method. So I'll go public function index, and we'll receive the user via the route model binding we set up earlier and we should return an inertia rendered page. And we'll go user tweets, and we'll return the user as a prop, and it's tweets. We already have a tweets relationship on the user model we can use. So here's the relationship. We need to call it here. And of course, paginated. The next step is to actually create this component. As you may have noticed, this project is based on Laravel 8 and it has Inertia set up via the new Jetstream application scaffold. For this example, I'm just going to copy the dashboard page, their tweets, and delete everything inside it. Well, almost everything. Let's delete the welcome page, for example. And remove this component. Let's add some test content here. Let's actually see this is working. So I'll do slash. This is my Twitter username. And we forgot to import the user tweets controller class. Come on. Okay, it seems to be working. I want to add some padding. Okay, and make this shadow a bit. Okay. Let's also define our props. So we'll have props and we receive user, which is an object, and tweets, which is also an object because it's a paginated result. And if we refresh the page and inspect using the view dev tools, we'll see that we receive user and tweets as props. Okay, next up is changing the title to something more appropriate, like username. Refresh. That's better. Next on the list is displaying the actual tweets. To do that, we'll use the v4 to loop through the tweets and display their contents. So we'll do a div and then a v4 tweet in tweets data. And we need a key, it will be tweet ID. And here we can go with image and the div to hold the username, which will be tweet user name, and then it's actual username. And 
and then another div for the tweet content. And if we refresh, something is broken because we don't have user. So we'll have to load this on the relationship. Oh, it's not load, it's with. Okay, and that's better. We have all the data in. And I remember we also have a profile image URL on the user. Let me check. So I have props with data object user. And we have a profile photo URL. So I can do tweet user. And if we refresh, yeah, we get a photo. Let me close the sidebar and do some styling for these. Alt will be the username. Therefore, for styling, we can do something like with 12 maybe. Rounded full. Refresh. Okay, that looks better. And to align these, we'll use flex. prevent the avatar from shrinking. We can use flex shrink zero. Okay. Let's add some margin left ML4 for example. Some padding for the entire thing. For borders, why not? That already looks decent. Let's make this bold, so span. Actually, this will be a link to the user profile. So we'll do something like So let's make this a link as well. We'll have the same value. But it will be styled differently. Yeah, that looks Twitter-ish. Okay, let's go on the actual infinite scroll part. To make infinite scroll work, we need to set up an event listener on the scroll event. We'll do that on the mounted lifecycle hook. So we'll do mounted window add event listener scroll and then our callback. Next, we need to know when we are close to the bottom of the page. To get the, that value, we need to subs subtract from the total height of the page, the size of the scroll, and the inner height of the, win the whole window. So we'll have let pixels from bottom equals document, document element offset height. This will get the whole height of the page. And we need to subtract the document element scroll top and the window inner height. And let's see if that works. Open the console and as we scroll down, we get the remaining pixels on the page. Okay, we want to load some new records once we are close to the bottom of the page. So let's say 200 pixels. Fresh, no console now. And right here, we're about 200 pixels. 
we want to load more tweets when we are close to the bottom of the page. We can do that by making an inertia request and preserving the current state and scroll of the page while adding new records, but as you will see that will uncover another problem. So this is the inertia get request to the next page URL, passing no query parameters, and we preserve the state and the scroll. And on the success callback provided by inertia, we get the page. And then we merge in the pagination properties and the actual page uh, tweets with the current tweets of the page. But the problem of this solution is if we scroll down, apart from the errors we are getting, because we are making multiple requests to the same page, apart from that, even if this will work, we get this query string here. And this will be weird because if we copy and paste this in another page, we are on the page four of tweets, but we also have page one, two, and three that are not loaded here. So this doesn't work because we need to get rid of the query param. The best solution in our case is to just use a regular Axis and perform an AJAX request. Axis comes with Laravel, but you could also use Fetch or anything else. So going with Axis, we can do Axis, get, pass in the URL. Then we get a response. Let's see what's there. I'm gonna get rid of this because it won't work as we expected. And if we take a look at what we are getting from the server, we are getting some inertia response thing that we cannot use. So let's make the server return something we can actually use. And we're going to do that by checking the current request and if the request wants JSON, so if request wants JSON, we return a regular JSON response. And we can even remove this duplication by creating a tweets variable. Let's go back refresh and we now get a response with data inside of it where it has the pagination and the other tweets. Okay, next up let's merge these two, the current tweets provided by Inertia with the tweets we are getting from the response. So this tweets object and we'll get the pagination from response data and merge the tweets together. So this will use a spread operator to grab all the individual tweets. And if we refresh, we'll get some other error, which is apart from the duplicate, we get avoid mutating a prop directly. So we cannot mutate tweets directly. Let's add a private property we can play with user tweets. And its initial value will be this tweets. And then we can just use this instead. And of course, we need to update this part. Hmm, what's wrong? Oh, we need to actually return this as an object. Okay, if now if we scroll down, we are getting this duplicate keys detected because we are making the same requests more than once. To avoid that, let's wrap our callback in a debounce call. So debounce 
and we'll import this from Lodash because Laravel comes with Lodash by default. And now this method will only be called one time at every 100 milliseconds. So if we do scroll, we get page five. So page two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And no query parameter. But of course, if we do want a query parameter, we can pass it in and load just page three, four, five, six, seven. And that's it. That's how you do infinite scroll with Inertia.js. You add an event listener for the scroll event, debounce the callback, make a regular access request to the server, and then append the result to the existing items in your local component state. Bye.